What's up guys, I've just walked out of the sales gallery after checking out their latest project called Maya Ara and that got me thinking about the entire situation of the property game right now. Right after the property sales gallery visit, right? I always believe you gotta strike the iron while it's hot. So when you are still like or fresh, whatever memory or data, using all those inflow and applying to the site is very, very important. And most of the time, sales gallery are also built very, very close to the site, as close as possible. And now there's two type. One is when the developer got budget, right? They will build their very own sales gallery, the whole package right another approach would be to build in an existing commercial lot closest to the site so right after the sales briefing you can immediately pay a visit to the site and you can just drive around come down from the car and just experience the site a little bit but you guys know I like to do things differently So just when I thought I was the only one doing this, right, you can see all the customers that just walked into the sales gallery just now are also doing the same in inspecting the site. That's very cool. After the drone shots, we have seen what's around the site where you have the apartments, you have Surrey Pilmore, the high-end residential, then you have this commercial area next to it and you have a river, right? adjacent to the site we can also look at the competitors right apartments that are pretty similar in terms of forms and pricing and that will allow you to gauge on the rental return if you are going to rent it out then you can also compare in terms of selling price to just make sure that you are buying the market price then as we are walking next to the site right this will allow us to somewhat gauge several things Number one is the accessibility. Like how does the cars access to the site? The second thing would be the amount of cars and how busy it can be because of the neighboring commercial area. So based on the drawings that I've got from my friends, of course, I'm not sure whether they can give you that, but this is the site and it's within a junction. When it's within a junction, what you need to take care of will be accessibility. How does resident come back home? Is it directly a tee off from this super big road? Or is there going to be a secondary road, a local road and all? Whoa! So with all those kind of things, you really need to take into consideration before placing the booking. So if we look into the site plan, right, what we can see is that this is the junction and this will be a buffer, a landscape buffer. And as residents, you will turn in here and you turn out here, right? So with this local road, it's much safer and this is a very nice distance away from the main road as well. You know, with all the dust and noise and all. And what we can also observe that this is the north point. So all units are facing either north or south. But when you can see this is Seri Pilmore and this is the commercial area, there will be some apartments behind here. So do take note whether on which orientation you want to face. Then this freehold project consists of 351 apartments in a 2.7 one acres land. It's quite amazing to see such a plantation land get transferred into a development. So we are now opposite the site and this will be the commercial area and it's busy a lot of people and uh, this is also to feel the vibrancy and to figure out the convenience if you were to stay yourself there's no commercial components at all in the building where do you buy your groceries where do you go for makan where do you settle your commercial needs lah, basically So by visiting the site, just so happened this one has a commercial area in the opposite. And when we have lunch, it's a good opportunity to also see who's around the area all the time. And based on observation, we get to see that there's a lot of working class people, a lot of blue collars, generally the younger crowds. And also something about this Ara Damansara site, right? It's well known because of its proximity to the Subang airport. If you travel every week or every month to other states that can be very useful then you also have new LRT connections within Aradamansara itself 
but too bad to this side that you don't have lah. Then you also have the medical center and a connection directly into Subang and Tropicana. So those are the main reasons why this location is very popular. Let's cross the street first, right? So it has always been well known for its landed properties, but now due to the scarcity of land, high rises start picking up. Also, you have the Lotus commercial area, you have Cheetah Mall right behind the site. Overall, a matured township. And that's the importance of doing site visits because you get a clear picture of who's gonna stay here if you're renting out or if you're staying yourself, what's gonna be the lifestyle like. So after coming back home after the site visit, generally the rest of the research work can be done on your desktop. And now it's pretty common that property developers are putting up their e-brochures online for you to download and for you to find out, right? So this is when you can start running competitor analysis, where you can see Ara Green how much, Arcus how much, Kantara how much. How much here means the price per square feet, the rental rates and etc. Because those will fundamentally become your reasoning when you put your booking. The other elements to take into consideration would be the lifestyle element because we just came out from lockdown, from MCO, right? So there's a lot of things that we need to incorporate into the facility design because the lifestyle elements kind of change. And also that trend of green architecture along with the compliance of affordable homes. So this is some information that only I get currently <laughs> using my connections. What we can see right now, this is the ground floor plan. And something to emphasize would be all the facilities are located around the ground floor. Well, I mean semi-public areas such as the management office, the surau, the lounge. And based on the team, all visitor car parks are located within ground floor. So that's very good for security. Next, this will be the block A floor layout design and there will be 17 units sharing four passenger lift and one service lift, okay? And something to highlight here would be these two type A units. Those are called SAM. So for the past few years, we have seen in terms of construction for affordable homes, they used to be built individually. Then slowly when we see it's merged with existing buildings where you have block A, block B, block C. Block C is all affordable when block A and block B are all open market. And now the latest trend is to actually include them on the existing layout itself. And something about affordable homes here, SAMM, Service Apartment Mampu Mile. In order to qualify for such houses, the household income is 15,000. If anything exceeds 15,000, then you are not eligible. But if your joint income is actually 15,000, Sometimes you come to think of it, you are eligible for an open market unit already. When people think like, hey, affordable component buyers are all people who cannot afford the open market one. That's why they are poorer, la. they will bring bad influence to the society. Actually, that's not true. So don't need to worry about it. And I actually like the idea of integrating it together. For their type B, it's 764 square feet, two bedroom, two bathroom. This is the standard type, but if you look at the same one, they add in a lana in here to have an outdoor connection to the bedroom too. So it's nice, especially for people who really enjoy outdoor spaces. Then the largest type would be 1055 square feet, three bedroom, two bathrooms. And when you come in, it's from the center of the space, then you can see that the open spaces are on one side and the private spaces are on the other. So that's cool. Another thing to highlight would be the green status of the building. And my question will also be like, would people prefer a green building and why? The answer is banks do give lower interest rate for buildings that are green compliant. And that is very new. And how do they achieve the green status is by orientation facing north and south, LED energy saving lights, rainwater harvesting tanks, compost beans, and etc. And that stands out to customers who are more uh, earth friendly in that sense. But if you are more interest rate friendly, you will also be attracted like, in that manner. And because of the lifestyle change that we have right now, there are a lot of new initiatives. Um, on the games room, they actually integrate in a green screen to somewhat be used as a mini studio. Then for the multi-purpose hall, you can see here, it's actually furnished with furniture that allows it to be used as a workspace instead of just hosting AGMs and all, right? 
Then for modern gyms, they are adding on certain twists to it. And for earth lovers, you have the herb garden and compost areas. So moving to the sales process, there's a lot of innovations as well. As a target audience for this project is generally younger, so they will usually have these several issues. Number one would be the loan approval issues. Lor. Then number two would be the furnishing issues. The third one would be the capital upfront, which most of us don't have. And last of all, that fear of gathering, that fear of crowds because of the virus. And now what I've learned for this exact project launch is they integrated several things. They collaborated with Phenology where you get to do your CITO secrets check, you get your loan approval check before actually proceeding with the entire sales process. So that's very, very helpful actually because a lot of people have no idea how to do it and they took the initiative to somewhat assist the buyers. I think this is good. The second thing is after you own a property, right? Right. The major cost is when you get your keys and to furnish it. So many buyers are just not prepared in terms of capital for it and they are working with the makeover guys. Yes. <laughs> As we have developed a new platform where you are able to customize your entire interior layout in accordance to what you like within the budget provider. If you want to add on, also can. And it's super, super fun, super, super convenient. And until the end of the year, right, I think we still have a few more months. All developers are just rushing to push out their products right now because of the HOC. I don't think there will be another extension because they have extended so many times already. I think it's going to be until this year only so by buying a HOC project, they are significant savings in terms of the stamp duty and MOT and etc. And last of all, all sales process, all sales launches, right, are actually conducted online right now. So there will be a lot of online balloting processes, the online registration processes and things like that. So for those old school property investors like me, we still go old school way, right? Even I just walked out from the sales gallery, I was still need to wait for a link online so I can register myself for the online balloting system. Good and bad, okay? So good if you are very savvy about technology bad, better equip yourself with better gadgets just to compete like if not right yeah all the good units all let people take uh. <laughs> and that's about it for this episode because i think I have not emphasized enough on what I do on a personal level. So in conclusion, after I walked out from a sales gallery and I'm interested in it, right? I'll register my interest first, of course, without even booking. So register interest first. Then if it's possible on that same day, I will drive to site. So if you go and visit sales gallery on your lunch hours, then it's a bit too rushed. Lah. So if you're going on a weekend, I would always encourage people to go and visit the site because here you get to determine several things. Number one is the site condition. Is it next to a mountain? Is it next to a tree? Is it next to an existing apartment? Is it next to high-end areas? Then for this particular project itself, we can see it's opposite commercial area, opposite the Seri Pilmo luxury houses. Then right behind you have an apartment and it's connected via a main highway for Arada Mansara. So via the site, we see I get to dictate the accessibility as well. So how do I go into the site? How do I come out from the site? That is very important. So for Maya Ara, it's good that there's a landscape area right in front that created a buffer between the entrance with the main road, between the entrance with the junction, between the entrance with the traffic noise and congestion, right? So that's good. And they actually leverage on that to somewhat beautify it, then hand over to the local authority. And that becomes a selling point for the existing project. Then by driving around Ara Damansara, when I walked around the commercial area, I get to dictate who are the people that will be staying here? How's the business activities right now in that area? And it seemed pretty busy. The target audience are pretty young. Also judging based on the traffic, right? I'm just glad that everything is almost back to normal. And something to point out here as well. For Ara Damansara as a location, it has its charm, right? Where it's located very close to the airport. It's connected via LRTs. Unfortunately, not to the site. Lah. Then you have the new Sam W Auto City that's a sighting. And you can see the huge offices all flocking in. I'm now in Subang Airport just to show you guys. The traveling season is back. Everybody gets to travel again. And in conclusion, right, it's just very cool to see that the market is constantly changing. Therefore, developers have to always adapt to the consumer behavior and appetite. That's very challenging but also exciting at the same time. And shout out to the team for letting me understand more about the project. This is not a review, therefore there won't be an analysis of it. But if you are interested, I'll just put a link down below. You guys can go check it out. If you really like this episode, like it, share it and even subscribe for more information like this. Until next time, this is Sean Dan. Ciao!